Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at using GoLive to insert favicons into our websites. Now if you don't know what a favicon is, a favicon, here let me bring up Firefox, a favicon is this little icon here at tutvid.com. I have this little orange head, Jake's head here, in the address bar. That is a favicon. Um, Google has a favicon. YouTube has a favicon, Yahoo does, all these big sites out there, and a whole lot of little sites also have favicons. There are a lot more people getting these favicons because most modern browsers now um, support favicons. So, you know, why not use them? They come up here in the address bar, they come up here if you're using tabbed browsing, they show up on your tabs, and they also show up in your bookmarks. Um, so, your logo can almost continuously be associated with your website's name. So, it's a really good way of branding your site. Um, and letting people know what you are, who you are, etc., etc., etc. Now, not all websites do have them. A lot of websites just have the default. And in Firefox on Windows, the default just looks like a page with a folded corner. Um, I believe that the default for a Mac is a little globe that is in Firefox. Um, Internet Explorer, Opera, Netscape. If you're using a Mac, Safari, they all have different um, defaults. So you know, the default is just whatever it's not really anything special and it doesn't really tell anyone anything about your page and it certainly isn't going to be your logo so that's the advantage of using a favicon and that's what a favicon is so we're going to look at how to create a favicon here basically start to finish i have here this logo this is for the jakes works website and we're going to use this i'm going to cut out the cogwheel here and create a favicon out of it. So I'm going to take my lasso tool, I'm just going to basically ring it, and I don't like that selection because I picked up a little bit of the shadow of the W. I'm just going to ring it just like that. I'm going to hit Command or Control J to pop it up onto its own layer. I'm going to shut off both of the other layers. In fact, I'm just going to select and delete them. I've got my layers palette off screen. But here I just have this cog wheel layer. Now notice we're in Photoshop, by the way. I should have mentioned that. I'm using Photoshop here. This is a PSD document. I'm just going to go up the image, hit trim, and I'm going to make my trim based on transparent pixels, and I'm going to trim away the top, bottom, left, and right. So there we go. We have just our image and with a transparent background just like that. All I need to do now is save it, and I already know where I have it saved as favicon.psd. It's important to name it favicon because that makes an impact later on when we convert this to a .ico file, which um, I'll get into in just a minute. So here, I just saved this cogwheel. I can close that down. Now we can come over into Go Live, right there, Go Live, and there's the site window. We are going to click on the bridge button to open up bridge here, and I've got this favicon.psd. I'm just going to drag it right into the site, okay? And all I did here was I just dragged it right into the what's called the root level of the site. It's on the same level as my home page. Um, it's good to keep your favicon on the root level of your site because it just helps with compatibility. Some browsers are kind of picky and they can be a pain in the neck about that. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're creating your favicon. Just put it on the root level of the site to ensure that it's going to work. All right, I'm going to open up index.html. I'm just going to double click it here. And here is the site. Now, Go Live has made creating a favicon extremely easy. Now, a favicon, if we were to hand code this, and by hand code I mean type all the code out and not use what's called a WYSIWYG uh, web editor here, where we just drag stuff in and we move stuff around and we make changes in our inspector palette or whatever, if I were just to hand code, if I were just using this or M Microsoft Word Pad or Notepad or anything like that, um, I would put my favicon code in here in between these head tags. So there's the opening head tag, and the closing head tag is somewhere else right there. There it is. Closing head tags right there. So we've got our opening and our closing head tags. Um, they would belong inside of there. So here in the or the layout, excuse me, side of Go Live, we want to open up the head portion of our site. You can see we've got a few objects up there now, but nothing that's a favicon object. So I'm going to come over here to the toolbar, and I'm going to go to Head, and I'm going to select right here the Favorite Icon tool, and I'm just going to drag it out into the head area. And you can see we now have this Favorite Icon little thing there in the head area. And over here, if I select it in my inspector palette, GoLive wants me to fetch the URL using the pick whip. Now, if I were just to do this and fetch this 
PSD file, it would not work. And it would not work because a favorite icon needs to be a .ico file. That's the file extension, .ico, just like a Photoshop document, it's a .psd. And it's a .ico, which stands for icon. Now, you have to convert that PSD to something that can be converted to an icon file. Now, Photoshop doesn't actually export an icon file. Um, there are free icon conversion tools online you can get. I don't know any of the websites right off the top of my head. Um, and there's also programs you can download that create icons that save images and things to icon files. Um, so, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. So, this isn't really going to do it for us because all we have here is a PSD. Go Live has another option and that creates the .ico file for us which is very nice. One other thing that I should point out that I forgot to point out is here let me bring this favorite icon back into Photoshop even though we already have it go live don't worry about it we're not going to save any changes or anything when you create your file that's going to be an icon file you should always make sure that it's about the same width and height wise here it's 112 by 109 I can just unlock that and change it to 109 by 109 and hit OK and just save that and close it you want it to be an exact square I'm going to pop go live back up here and I'm going to drag this favicon.psd back in here minimize that it's telling me that it already exists I do want to replace it so there we go we just replaced it and now we've got a perfect square so let's get back to actually creating this favicon I'm going to move my inspector panel out of the way to allow us to see more of the screen I've got my head section open I'm going to come back into my toolbar I'm going to select smart and down here is the smart favorite icon I'm going to drag that up to the head section now all we have to do is come down here Make sure you've selected the favorite, smart, favorite icon. And again, Go Live wants us to fetch the URL, so I'm going to come over to my site window and I'm just going to hit favicon.psd. Now it's telling me it's creating the .ico data, and you can see this dialog box has popped up. And it's giving me all of these conversion settings, and it's asking me if I want to create 32 bit image, and 24, and 256 color, and 16 color images. I want to create all of these images. Um, just creating all these images it's just better compatibility there's compatibility issues that you may run into so I just suggest you create all four and just hit OK and now it's going to ask you where you want to save it I'm going to hit the site folder here down in this little dialog box that pops up I'm going to hit root to make sure that I'm on the root level of my site I'm just going to save it as favicon.ico right there in the root level of my site if I go back to my site window you can see I now have favicon.ico and up here, I also have favicon.ico. I'm going to save my index.html file. And I'm going to move that over. And I'm going to hit Command or Control Shift T, which basically just previews in your default browser. Now, if you don't have a default browser set, it's going to preview it in live rendering. So you can just come up here to your toolbar, click and hold, and just drag down until you see a browser you like. Now, notice I've got the cog wheel up in my address bar. I also have it here on my tab. It's a working favicon. It's that easy. And again, because this is a smart object, if you know what the advantages of smart objects are, you, I could just edit this PSD, and when I save it again, the smart object will automatically update, so I don't have to worry about coming in and updating this .ico file as well. That will automatically change when I change the PSD. So not only does GoLive create the .ico file for you, but it also gives you options later on if you want to go back and edit the PSD. So it's that easy. GoLive makes it super duper easy to make these favicons and really if it's that easy to do it why not do it so that's it for this one I hope you learned something I hope you enjoyed it and please go check the site out that's www.tutvid.com thank you for watching